it is time for the first installment of 2020's top five best GPU series. And with the recent release of AMD's Radeon RX 5600 XT, along with some updated pricing and even some drivers, it's time for, well, an update in this series. But before we jump into the picks, Today's video is sponsored by Corsair and their new flagship mechanical gaming keyboard, the K95 Platinum XT. It features immersive dynamic per key RGB backlighting with 19 zone light edge, along with a comfortable cushioned leatherette palm rest and PBT double shot keycaps. The six dedicated macro keys are now compatible with Elgato Stream Deck software, allowing you to easily and conveniently set commands such as record or take a screenshot, for example. And capping it all off are Cherry's MX Speed RGB Silver Key Switches. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so the idea of this video is to summarize all of our findings from our various in-depth benchmark videos and reviews. So summarize all the information to date to help steer you towards the best buy at each price point. As usual, there are five categories and they cover numerous price ranges. So there should be something for everyone. So let's get to the picks. At the time of making this video, it is possible to buy an eight gigabyte RX 580 for as little as $160 US, which is a pretty incredible price for such a product. Though to be fair, a more typical asking price is around 170 to 180 dollars US. Meanwhile, eight gigabyte RX 570s come in at 150 dollars, with four gigabyte versions selling for just 120 dollars US. And that's another great buy for those of you with a more limited budget. Then we have the RX 590, that's at 200 dollars US. So there are quite a few Polaris-based options out there for 200 dollars or less. The new kids on the block include the GeForce GTX 1650 Super at $160 US or the Radeon RX 5500 XT for $200 if you want the version with an 8GB VRAM buffer or $180 for a measly 4GB. The 5500 XT is a bit of a gimped GPU in our opinion given that it is limited to PCIe 4.0x8 bandwidth. Not only does that make the PCIe 4.0 support completely worthless, but it means the card is potentially handicapped when installed in a system that only features PCIe 3.0 support, which right now is the vast majority of systems, especially for those buying entry-level GPUs. Therefore, if you're after power efficiency, we recommend the GTX 1650 Super at $160 US, but if you want the most bang for your buck right now and an 8GB memory buffer, we recommend the RX 580 or possibly the 590. The 8 gigabyte version of the RX 570 isn't that great in terms of value, but if you want a cheap and still very capable graphics card, the 4 gigabyte 570s are a steal at just $120 US. So to recap, the best low budget option is the 4 gigabyte RX 570. Best power saving model is the GTX 1650 Super. And then the best bang for your buck is the 8 gigabyte RX 580. Now, for those of you able to spend between two to $300 US, there are a few options. At the lower end of this price range, we have the GTX 1660 Super, which is competing with the RX 590. In terms of cost per frame, they are about the same. So the GeForce GPU is a little faster while the Radeon GPU is a little cheaper. Outside of that, the 1660 Super uses less power, but the RX 590 has a little more VRAM. It's a tough choice, but of the two, I'd go with the 1660 Super for the power savings and that extra OC headroom. Then for those of you wanting to spend around $300 US, there is the Radeon RX 5600 XT and GeForce RTX 2060. Well, some RTX 2060 models. This is a bit of a tough one and really it shouldn't be. The 5600 XT is a little cheaper. It's also a little faster and a little more efficient. Add all that up and you have what should clearly be a winner. However, after recently pitting the two head to head, I ended up recommending the RTX 2060 simply because of the driver issues AMD were facing at the time. Since then though, AMD has released an updated driver which addressed a number of the issues users were having. And as far as I can tell, a lot of the problems have been solved. Moreover, NVIDIA's $300 RTX 2060 Founders Edition graphics cards seem to be no longer available 
they've been removed from the shop and the product page says out of stock and that's been the case for weeks now. For the most part, the RTX 2060 looks to be a $320 US product, so about $30 US more than factory overclocked AIB 5600 XTs. So, given the increased price of the RTX 2060 graphics cards and the recently improved drivers from AMD, I'm going to reverse my previous decision and recommend the RX 5600 XT. Okay, so the rather large three to $600 price range is still locked down by AMD with their Radeon RX 5700 and 5700 XT, especially now that AMD appears to have ironed out those pesky driver bugs. To date, I've completed a number of massive gaming benchmarks featuring the 5700, 5700 XT, RTX 2060 Super, and the 2070 Super. So we have a very good idea of how these GPUs compare. In short, the 5700 XT is still at least $100 cheaper than the 2070 Super, and when compared across a massive range of games at 1440p, it was just 6% slower on average, and that meant it was 14% cheaper per frame in our cost per frame analysis. The only reason you might consider the RTX 2070 Super would be for 4K gaming, but even there, the 5700 XT still offers more value, despite being 9% slower, as it costs 20% less. The 5700 XT also eliminated the RTX 2060 Super, offering more performance at the same price, while the vanilla 5700 offers 2060 Super performance for around a $50 saving. So in my opinion, this one is pretty cut and dry. Get yourself a 5700 series graphics card. Nothing's changed here. If you still have around $700 to spend on a new graphics card, the GeForce RTX 2080 Super is what you're after. Mostly because there are no other alternatives and please be aware you are going well beyond the point of diminishing returns. The 2080 Super is just 15% faster on average when compared to the 5700 XT, yet it's priced 75% higher. So you're paying 52% more per frame, and that is quite the hefty premium. There's really not much more to say here. The 2080 Super was the worst of the Super refresh, at least in our opinion, and with no competition from AMD, Nvidia can clearly get away with charging such premiums. Speaking of premiums, can I interest you in an RTX 2080 Ti? A year and a half since it was first released, AIB cards are still priced $100 US over MSRP. Again, you've got to love that complete lack of competition. Unfortunately, for those with really deep pockets, all options right now are Nvidia, and the only choice for gamers seeking maximum performance is the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. And yeah, it is certainly a beast of a graphics card, offering around 20% more performance than the RTX 2080 Super, though it does also cost around 40% more as well. So be aware of that. And as I just noted, the 2080 Super is pretty horrible value. Here you're paying about 175% more than the 5700 XT for 47% more performance at 4K. That said, it does enable a much higher quality 4K gaming experience. But if you are after a no compromise type solution for the ultimate 4K gaming experience, then I suppose get ready to part with at least $1,100 US, probably more like $1,200 US if you want one of the more fancy versions such as the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme, MSI Gaming X Trio, or the ASUS ROG Strix, for example. And that brings us to the end of our picks. And I have to say, a year on, things have changed quite a bit, though I think it is fair to say that progress overall has been quite slow. March last year, we recommended the RX 550 as the best entry-level GPU, then the RX 570 and 580 as the best sort of mid-range options, uh, the GTX 1070 Ti as the best high-end 1440p GPU, and then of course the RTX 2080 Ti as the best extreme 4K gaming GPU. More recently, we have dropped the sub $100 category at the request of viewers, as these GPUs really aren't much better than AMD's iGPUs. And with the RX 570 at just $120, it'd be crazy to spend $90 on an RX 550. So the sub $200 category is really won by both AMD and Nvidia, depending on your priorities. 
For just over $200, I feel Nvidia offers the best all-round option with the GeForce GTX 1660 Super, and then at $300, the RTX 2060 is an attractive option if you can find one at that price, which seems less and less likely as time goes on, making the real attraction here AMD's RX 5600 XT. Then from three to $500, it's all AMD in my opinion, but beyond that, it's clearly all Nvidia, as AMD doesn't even exist at those price points. So the competition between AMD and Nvidia is slowly, very slowly building up. But if AMD manages to keep on track and deliver some of the promises they've made for this year, then yeah, we could have a very interesting top five GPU video towards the end of the year. So fingers crossed for that. And with that happy thought, I'm gonna end the video here. If you did like this video, then you know what to do. There's that YouTube stuff we often talk about. And if you happen to disagree with any of the picks here, then feel free to leave a polite rebuttal down below and I'll be sure to read it and have a chat with you about that. And of course, if you agree or have any other thoughts or whatever, comment section down below, feel free to drop those there. And again, I will read them. Uh, also, we have Patreon if you're interested in that. Pretty cool community over there and a lot of nice perks, monthly live stream, Discord chat, behind the scenes stuff. So check that out if you are interested. No pressure though, just there if you are interested, as I said. But above all else, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.